All right. Hey guys, welcome back to the vlog. Over here, we have Sade. You may remember Sade from such episodes as Happiness. And Lyndon, actually Lyndon Cookson. Hi. Lyndon joins the ha join, has joined the Happiness, actually has been uh, part of the Happiness team since day one. Um, and we've been getting a lot of questions here um, from the viewers, as well as members, as well as people that come in and tour, as well as people hitting me up on LinkedIn and Twitter um, with business questions and advice. So we decided, what I, what I mean by we, is Sade thought it would be a great idea. <laughs> Sade really thought it would be a great idea if Linda and I created this segment called Questions and Answers. So every Monday around this time, give or take, depending on the workloads, um, we're going to run a vlog on questions and answers. So we're going to go to our first question, Lyndon. Sure. We've got a whole bunch of questions here. We're going to do our best to answer them. And if we can't, we'll come back to you. So first question, yep. um, Gavin from Twitter. Gavin from Twitter. Um, Thanks for writing in. He'd like to know, how do you know if your idea can be taken off the ground and turned into a profitable business? Ooh, good question. So, um, and this is, the, by the way, this is the first time I'm getting these questions, so there's no rehearsal. It's fresh. This is fresh and live. <laughs> um, look, I think, I think the, uh, the best way to answer that is, you know, you really need to, in some cases, you know, in the tech world, you would talk about MVP, minimum viable product, not Kobe Bryant or Tim Duncan being That's the most... Out of those at the long term time. You're okay, yeah, so it's not the most valuable player if you're a basketball <laughs> fan or a football fan. Um, it's minimum viable product. And what you want to do is you want to try and create the minimal product and test it against the market. In some cases, it just might be an idea that you share with friends or it might be something that you hand make and try and sell um, and really just gauge what the audience or how the feedback is, um, it is or how the product is received by those people. Try not to do it. Try not to do it with friends and family. I was going to say, who do you approach? Like yeah. Friends and family? Or? Look, I think that I think you could do extended family yeah. and maybe distant friends. Not too close, though. I think you're not going to get real feedback. Yeah. I think if my daughter draws this beautiful painting <laughs> of me, um, I just think it's amazing and I'm going to tell her how amazing it is. Yeah. Um, whereas yeah. Lyndon draws me a photo. Looks it's rubbish. <laughs> well, I don't go that far, but I, you know, I would give you some great feedback. Um, yeah. So I think that MVP is an absolute. Um, you know, if I can take you back a little bit to, to my days in the pet blue world, um, my first MVP was a physical cardboard version of what I wanted to create. Um, then we spent a few thousand dollars on building a mold. Um, and a vacuum formed product. I think our first product didn't cost us like a thousand dollars to produce. Uh -huh. And then we took it around to pet stores and we got the feedback from customers. Yeah. And then it was like, this is great. And during that feedback process, I qualified, well, what would you pay for it? And then like, what would you pay for it? And sort of try and worked out where the market is talking, not, not two people exclusively, but try and interview or, or questionnaire about a hundred people. Uh, if you can get to that number, because you're going to get a real good uh, segment of data then. What, what were those products though, Toby? Like, can you give us an example of what it was? Yeah, so we, we made well, Pet Lou being the product, uh, being the dog potty. Um, and Did you test it out yourself? <laughs> well, <laughs> with your dogs, just to clarify. Yeah, with your dogs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know, if uh, there were times where Sim was a little bit in <laughs> a <laughs> bedroom apartment, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm way off topic. Yeah. But look, I think so. So at that, pro, at, you know, I knew I couldn't produce a product for a thousand bucks. So yeah. otherwise, I'd be paying people seven hundred dollars to take it off me, right? But I was able to qualify the market. I was able to qualify where everyone was at, and then I went into mass production. At that, before I did all of that, I then ran a financial model. Yeah. And worked out whether or not that I could produce a product and make a margin before someone buy it and work out and qualify whether the business is viable. So it's a lot of research, really. 
Um, a lot of research, but I think there's a lot of practical aspects to it yeah. as well. So MVP, prototyping, rapid iteration, um, understand your numbers, got to understand your numbers and execute like no one's, like it's no one's business. So I hope that answers the question. What was it uh, Gavin? I hope we answered your question. If, you, if we didn't, at Toby Scotron or at Creative Cubes Co. And we will, uh, I'll continue on the conversation with you. That actually leads us into our next question. Uh -huh. Dorothy emailed asking, how do you know if your idea can turn, be turned into a profitable business? So I think um, where I started to end off with Gavin, um, understand your financials, right? So understand if we took this product, for example, understand every aspect of what, it, uh, every aspect of it in order to deliver this product to the person's house or alternatively to a retail outlet and then understand all of the financials involved in creating this product and then work out whether or not the market is going to pay for that plus a margin uh, in order for you to be profitable. But, you know, I'm not the numbers guy. We actually have a phenomenal, uh, we have two phenomenal talents behind the numbers here at Creative Cubes and those guys run circles around me, Andy and George. Um, and the layers and layers and layers of detail that we have on an operational side of things. Um, like there's a ton of experience here, so obviously we're very in tune, but you know, you really have to ha understand every aspect of every aspect of cost of business. All the way down to the light globe and the light bill. Um, and every single every penny. Every single penny. <laughs> every single, and these guys know these guys know the drill. But, but look, here's the reality. If this thing's gonna cost me a dollar, all in, to make, I've got operational overhead, such as reception, such as phone numbers, such as running my website. You need to add all of those numbers in and hope that that comes to, call it a dollar 50. So it's a dollar for the, dollar for the glass and 50 cents in operational expenditure. Um, and sell that for, say, $3. Um, and hope that the market can absorb that at three dollars, as an example. Yeah. So is that who is that from? Dorothy. Dorothy. Um, yeah. If we haven't answered your question, send us an email. Or where is she coming from? Facebook. No, she emailed us. Oh, she emailed she us. Heard about us on Google. There you go. So uh, hello at, at creativecubes.co. .co. Not .com. Not .com. .au. That's too cool for us. We're just .co. <laughs> Linda, have you got another question? Oh, lazy. Just yes. <laughs> yes. So, yes. Um, LinkedIn message. Okay. Where do you guys see co-working going in the next couple of years? So I think that here in Australia, we're at somewhere like 0.06% of total level leasable uh, commercial real estate in Australia. Meaning that all I mean, across all offices, across all offices, co-working exists at 0 0.06 of one percent. Yeah. In America, that number is significantly different. Um, co-working, I believe, at least where we're making the bet, um, is the future of how people and offices work. So if we take like Westpac Banking, for example, they have a lot of commercial bankers, a lot of mortgage brokers, a lot of uh, private bank bankers that are, and mobile bankers that are basically rolling around the cities um, serving people those bankers are have an opportunity to work from a branch and those or alternatively and more, more importantly or majority of them work from home um, and so they're they're commuting to and from their customer which is great i think Working from home has, a, has its pros and cons. Yeah. I think that when you immerse yourself, at least here at Creative Cubes, I don't know, I can't speak for other co-working spaces around Australia and, and around the globe, but um, here you've got, you know, you bump into people getting a coffee, there's conversations, there's transactions. You know, I can speak for two companies downstairs in their first week here, both of them claim, and I'll try and get them on the vlog, but both of them claim to have had their biggest week financially. That's so cool. Just because that company was there, that company was there, they understood what each other was doing, like, hey, can you help me out? Yeah, I can help you out. A transaction was created and both of them, um, actually the three people involved, these two and the customer, 
um, or, 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 or made something happen. So yeah. in terms of like getting to the direct question, where's it going? I think that co-working is the absolute future. I think it's the future because businesses historically, like if I look at my grandparents and my, my parents um, and my in-laws, you know, they used to have properties or uh, buildings where they would go and all their company would be together. Yeah. I think agile working and agile workspaces today enable the example of the mobile banker or um, a work from home business. So long as you're connected to the net, mm -hmm. yeah. businesses are pretty much enabled these days. And so I think as that gets stronger and as new opportunities spit out from connectivity, I think co-working makes sense commercially for small businesses, agile businesses and large corporations that really want to immerse themselves where their customer is. Um, so I think there's huge yeah. ups. I think a lot of people bring them, they make it feel um, more f at home for them too because now people are bringing in their own clients versus them going to their clients. So it's more so that they um, want to make name for themselves as well. Right. So if you look at like Gavin, JJ and Beck downstairs, <coughs> right, they've been in business for a few years, they're a ragingly successful business, but never actually had their own headquarters, they were always at their customer, in front of their client, working with their founders. Um, now, you can see how much business that they're bringing into the building by having their own meeting rooms here, yeah. meeting with other other customers, other members of Creative Cubes or other yeah. co-working members. Um, and you can see like things are starting to really rock it. And uh, what, do we, what do we say a brand representation of where they're at? So obviously like the space represents where their business stands for them to be in such a, you know, whatever type of space that anyone is, it's big brand representation for them. It's, yeah, I think I think like you're like so if you take like uh, Dean for example, right? Mm -hmm. um, who's a single guy working on his. He now presents himself, even though he's a startup, still looking for funding, mm -hmm. still in university, still yeah. doing you know moonlighting. I mean, the guy's here till eleven o'clock at night. He's right. he's an yeah. absolute inspiration. Yeah, very yeah, good. But if you look at where he's at from a commercial aspect. He represents himself. He's able to bring his right. his customers in and clients in to a really like wow factor space yeah. for seriously six hundred and fifty dollars a month. Like like his membership is a, a drop in the ocean for what he gets in in terms of service and amenity. <laughs> and so so I just think that that's going to get stronger and bigger for us as creative cubes. You know like uh, the, the the team. And I really want to have multiple locations across the country so that you're in Melbourne today, you use the Melbourne location, you're in Sydney tomorrow, you can go in there. So I think that agile working is like just, it just helps agile workers even more so. Okay, cool. Hope that answered the question. James from LinkedIn. James. Thanks, James. <laughs> Do we have, we have time for one more? Um, let's say, let's go with Stacy. She's coming from Facebook. Mm -hmm. Uh, where was creativecubes.co born? Great question. A lot of people don't really know. Who's the mother? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's between Andy and I. <laughs> and uh, I, you know, I didn't need to ask Andy. But, but a lot of people don't know about what creative, or how Creative Cubes was born. You know, we, um, I, I, I was living in the United States for eight and a half years. And I worked at a co-working space in Santa Monica, California. And I fell in love with collaboration. And after I saw my first business uh, in 2013, I called up Andy, who's a CFO here um, and leads our, well, he actually takes care of HR uh, as well as financials. Um, and I said, mate, you've got to come out to LA. I've, I've seen the future. You've, you've got to have a look at this. So he, he came out. Um, to LA and we, we toured around a bit and we, we, we spoke and we really solidified our vision. But that was 2013. 2014 rolls around and he was really focused on what he was doing. I, I had started a dog walking business. 
Um, and in the back of my head, it was like one day, it wasn't necessarily in the back of my head, Sid kept tapping me. Yeah, <laughs> it's time to go home, yeah? Like, we're going home back to Australia. Um, and I pushed her out for, for eight years. Wow. But yeah, next year, baby, we'll go back. Next year, next year. <laughs> Lands about doing that eight times. And then she wants to go back. <laughs> yeah, so she wants to go back to LA, but the, um, the, the, uh, the thing about where we're going with this is that I, I called up Andy um, in March 2016 and said, all right, mate, it's time. I'll be home in October. Let's find a building and let's, let's go for it. And uh, thank, thank God uh, we built an amazing team. You guys are part of that DNA. <laughs> um, we've got incredible leadership. Um, in the company and we've built a place that really represents us as people um, and I think it actually represents us as a team and um, you know it's the product is speaking for itself we've got an amazing community here um, we don't we don't accept everyone into the community it's you know we're really precious about uh, who's in here and, and why is that because collaboration is super important to us um, but uh, we've got building two in Hawthorne coming in Feb, probably March. Um, I expected it to be December, but <laughs> I'm told Feb. Um, so 600 Glen Ferry Road, um, you can find that on our, on our website. Um, and, and really, that'll be sort of like the first rollout of around 20 odd that we have planned for uh, Across Australia, New Zealand, and you know we hope to hit Asia as well uh, at some stage. Um, so, did that answer the question? I think so. Yeah. Who we was have, it from? I was gonna say we haven't figured out who the mom was, but. <laughs> so, yeah. Andy, if you want to be mom, I'll be dad. And if you want to be dad, I'll be mom. So, <laughs> but Andy and I, Andy and I uh, started creative cues. We actually built all of the uh, intellectual property back in 2013. And then um, we were both, yeah, we were doing it for a while. Yeah, we were both very preoccupied. Yeah, but first sight is amazing. Yeah, site one, I think, really stamps um, stamps the brand. Yeah. Solidifies where we're at, solidifies our offering. Um, and I'm gonna tell you guys, I don't know how you feel. I feel super addicted being here. Like, I just, <laughs> I think you came into the office the other night and I was there, I was like, hey, good night. I was like, I want to go, yeah. but I yeah, can't let go. I just want to. Yeah, there's just, not enough hours in the day. So it's anyway, always, always good. Guys, we're gonna wrap it up there. Um, before we do, at Creative Cubes Co on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. Hello at CreativeCubes.co. You can reach me on Twitter at Toby Scovron. Next Monday, we're gonna have four, five, six hundred more questions, <laughs> um, and we're gonna run this segment every Monday. Lyndon, Sade, Toby, we're out. Chicken, <laughs> <Chicken, right? laughs> <Just bad. laughs>